This is Twit. All right. So let's say that you're intrigued by this AI thing. Maybe you actually know what you're doing. You want to be able to run and play with AI, but you want to do it locally. And you don't want to use your GPU. What is a fella to do? Well, there is a new player. Well, not really a new player, but a new option in town. Uh, Raspberry Pi has released the AI Hat Plus 2. And it's got some really intriguing things on it. With it, it it'll do. Um, it is based on the... Hilo, I think 10H Neural Network Accelerator. It is 40 tops of int 4 performance. And then it has an additional I don't I don't remember several tops of int 8, I think is the way that went. And so it's almost like it's got two separate neural processing cores. Uh it's also got onboard RAM. Um it's got 8 gigs. Uh, of dedicated onboard memory. And the idea is that you can actually load your model into that and it will do the inference on the on the card itself without having to use your Raspberry Pi memory because that was one of the things that they ran into with the previous AI hat is that people were just running out of the running out of memory space and not able to do some of the things that they wanted to do with it. Um, there is a group of supported model models, uh, DeepSeek R1 Distill, Llama 3.2, Quinn 2, Quinn 2.5 Instruct, Quinn 2.5 Coder, and they say more is coming. Uh, it, it's an interesting little card. I don't have one. I've not played with it myself. Uh, but I imagine that for certain things, this is going to be really interesting. That there's a demo about uh, running a kiosk, like a a self check, at a grocery store, and I believe in the demo, someone was just moving items across, and you know, overhead camera running on the Raspberry Pi, and so it was dedicating like part of the AI chip to identifying items. And then it was doing something else with the other half of the AI chip. So, like some interesting, interesting capabilities here. Um, there is also a review of this thing by Jeff Gearling. He did have one in hand, and his opinions on it was uh, a bit mixed, actually. So, essentially saying that yes, it's cool that you get a couple of extra things. It'll do things that the original one wouldn't, but it's still not very useful, and. I'm going to say that I think this is one of those products that's going to need a few more months to bake. The pie needs a few more months to bake uh, before it, you know, really becomes useful for things. And you know, it, there there will likely be some sort of a breakthrough use case, whether it be you know a, a locally hosted um, natural language sort of add on to Home Assistant, let's say. Or maybe one of the open source um, video recorders like Zone Minder, Frigate, I think is the other one. You know, they may write some code that will let you use this to say, classify what the cameras see and give you a end of day no description of what it was. Maybe you can run that on something like this. So all, all that to say that yeah, I agree with Jeff in that like it's probably not super useful right now. But it gives people, it gives the community a, a, a set of tools that we didn't have previously. And uh, I'm just real interested to see what, what open source projects do with those tools. And I suppose closed source projects too. There's nothing inherently open source about the, um, about the Pi. Like you can run whatever you want to on it, obviously. But I, I just, I'm interested to see what happens with it. I think people will do some fascinating, uh, fascinating things with this. So you talked with Jeff about it before the show? Uh, I watched his YouTube video, and we've got that linked in the show. Oh, notes. that Jeff. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Gearling. Not not our Jeff, the other Jeff. Uh, do you guys had you guys seen this? I didn't see that story. Uh, it was on my list. I thought I'd wait and see if uh, one of you guys picked it up. Um, but yeah, I I I, I glanced it through it, and I'm going. That sounds interesting. <laughs> Do I want to get that or an ebook reader that I've been looking at? <laughs> we know the answer to that one. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I may I may pick one up just to have it to play with it. See what I can. Yeah, do I'd, I'd be curious what along with another uh, Raspberry Pi Five. Of course, 
and uh, and the the hat to be able to run an NVMe on it, another NVMe to get, go with it. You know, I'd be just, curious the uh, use cases of that on a Pi as opposed to someone with a a low end PC or something like that. You know how how, how the projects could compare. You know what kind of use cases they could find difference. And it probably yeah. worked better than using an old Lenovo ThinkPad from three or four years ago. Yeah, absolutely. But low power AI. There's one of the the, the complaints right there. They say it. How uh, how how much it it costs electricity and all that stuff. So yeah, I can do it. <laughs> how many of those would you need in a data center, though? Oh my goodness, a bunch. But that's sort of the idea. Is it's it the, the whole idea of the the Pi AI hat is it's like running AI without the data center. So you know th this would make sense either on on premises or in the home. You know, all, like on the edge or in the home would be the two places this would really make sense. Um, and it's kind of a, a toolkit to play with that. If you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out the Untitled Linux Show. You can find us in your favorite podcasting app or subscribe to our YouTube channel down in the links below. See you there. Mm -hmm.